once you get into your pentatonics, there are five notes, pentatonic, a five note minor or major. These would be, um, typically I'm a minor pentatonic girl because it's blues rock, not country. So those five notes themselves, not the road map and pattern, but those five notes are everywhere and all of them. And I found one pattern that looks kind of like the, the Big Dipper. So if I'm in the key of A, I'm, now when I start those five notes, I don't start on the root. The root would be the second note in that pattern. So from my root six, I have those three places where I can play the five notes of the pentatonic. I can get them in three times on my root six because I can use all of the strings. Then my root five, I can only play those five notes in their entirety, that shape that looks like the Big Dipper. Uh, I can only play it twice in my root five. Okay, now, when you're playing, when you're learning to play lead, this can be a good system to use because you can just, uh, any lick that you stumble upon or learn or make up in any of those areas, hit pause, and like if you're, you know, playing to a rhythm track or something, hit pause and say, okay, what is that lick? Uh, that's the lick, I'm just making this up. Well, now play it in all five areas. So that gives you kind of a jumping off point to turn one lick into five licks. And so if you were to, to learn 10 licks in your vocabulary and play them in all five areas of the guitar, of the, the like Big Dipper, that, that little you know repetitive five notes, then you'd have 50 licks. You'd be able to turn 10 licks into 50. Uh, because when you go through one of those 50 lick series, it's great to learn 50 licks, but that's a lot of licks. Whereas if you learn five, or if you learn 10, obviously just one and then two and then three, you know, so you build up to 10 licks and can play them in all five places. Not only do they give you, quote, 50 licks, of course we can do the math, but in playing them in, th in the five different places, you're going to realize that some areas of the neck of the guitar work best for some of those licks. Some areas don't work well at all, so adapt them. So it kind of pushes you into uh, doing an alteration or, you know, or sitting different where you can reach it or realizing that, well, yeah, I can do the, oh, and that ties in with this. And, you know, so it really can be like this key that unlocks the neck of the guitar. Now, if you've been playing for a while, but you're stuck, um, a lot of times people, they'll overcomplicate things. Uh, when people send me, you know, I say, you know, just put on a rhythm track and send me jam to it. I want to see what you're doing. Uh, I tend to see people when they're starting out, uh, maybe they've learned how to bend. So now they try to bend every note just at random. They just start bending. And, um, and that there's only a few places that bends really work. And if you can see the terrain of the guitar, like if I'm in the key of A, there it is in its basic form. And if I expand it, so like here, I've got a whole step. So to bend, A whole step bend is kind of that sweet spot. 
that's a very natural, normal bend. Yeah, you might want to make it cry and just... But typically, uh, we bend up a whole step. Now, I've got the opportunity to bend a whole step on my first string, second string, and third string. So in my root six minor pentatonic, this area of the neck is great. You're free to bend. Now, if I go to my root five, I'll stay in the same key. Expand it. On my third string, the next note, a step and a half. So to bend to that, one, good luck. And if tens are questionable, <laughs> real good luck, you know. Um, it's just, yeah, I can bend a step and a half. And if I'm like really bored or really stretching things out, you know, I might do something crazy like that. But a natural, normal bend, no. I'm not going to bend in an area that I have to go a whole step and a half. And I can bend just fine on, I've got a whole step on my first and second strings. But, So I'm not going to bend that string. And then if I'm like here, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, people just, they just start bending. And really, the three, top three strings, first, second, and third strings in your root six minor pentatonic, you have a whole step up to the next note. Great places to bend. In your root five, you have a whole step, a whole step, but on your third string, you have a step and a half. Now, um, just bending cold is a very naked thing to do. And if you're a female, my hands aren't as strong as a guy. So I find that, oh, I got a, I mean, I can bend just fine when I'm playing, but when I just sit here and go to bend or if I'm on acoustic, it takes hand strength for me to do that. So I've learned that when I bend, when I get to that area, I start giving it a little bit of vibrato. That's what I call grace. <laughs> now, if I'm playing two notes, there's a little bit of grace just because, you know, it's not naked, single note out there all by itself, you know. So you can get it up there. Um, but you need to practice. <laughs> Get a feel for where the tip of your finger needs to grab hold of that. If you're down too far or if you're too high up, you know, there's just a sweet spot for... And I use my thumb and I bend up like this. A lot of times I'll see people um, with their guitar, their hand like this and their... They don't have, they've got their thumb down, you know, and you have no leverage. So if I wrap my thumb around here, I've got all kinds of power. But if I don't have my thumb around here, I'm not going to bend. You know, I just don't have the hand strength. And I don't know that anybody does, <laughs> even if they do that, have the hand strength. You have the stability. It's not just about strength. It's also about stability. So you kind of get a gauge. You want to get that in your DNA. But back to the five notes. So you've got those five sweet spots. They're identical notes. The second note of each is its root. There's the A. There's the A. There's the A. There's the A. There's 
CA. Now, you've got those five sweet spots, plus, like we were just looking at, the top three strings on your root six and your root five. Your root six and your root five here, you've got a straight line. Here you've got like stair steps. So those two areas are good to work, but if you know those five notes, any lick that you learn, you can play it in all five places and you can tailor it. Uh, let, let the guitar show you what can best be done with that lick. You know, first try to nail it the exact same way all over the place. Then you'll find, ooh, that's kind of hard. You know, so just work with it and say, well, what else can I do with it? Then it's a matter of uh, stringing those licks together. Um, you can also, like, so in the key of E, you've got here's my expanded E minor pentatonic basic. Five and root six basic. Which let me show those patterns here. There is a root six minor pentatonic. The red dots are the root, and you can see the basic in expanded form. I've also taken a major scale and laid over top um, down at the bottom just so you can see um, where the notes are. So let's not look at that right now. Let's stay focused on the pattern of the pentatonic. And then here's root five. So if you look at the um, major scale, you'll see where your roots are, your minor three, your five, your flat sevens. You'll see all of those. Root, flat three, four, five, and flat seven. So when you're playing uh, here in the key of E, you only have two. Three will be up here. Now, so much happens in this big box. you find that you're playing a little bit bigger picture uh, than just those five notes and that's fine and if you're in the key of A you know you might play through those boxes you, know, you might play a little bit bigger span but those five notes are the nut of what you're doing so um, I just really encourage you to play around get some rhythm tracks that you like and just play with these things. Now, uh, when Tom sent a video this week, I identified something that was really, uh, I think, a, a key learning, uh, hopefully for him, but for me as a teacher, was to, to, to pinpoint something. A lot of times when you start really developing some licks and using the system, which he's doing a great job at, to, uh, to try to use a system sometimes, you'll work an area and then work an area and then work an area and work an area, which is exactly what I'm asking you to do. But then to take it to that next level, back up from that concept and get in one area and feel it. too quick to try to put together a lick so you got a lick get anchored in in the groove and let that area tell you now here's what we're going to do with this okay uh then then when you uh, 
in let the licks come to you really build them in that area then take them to another area and back take them to another area and back and then walk between the two that can be another way to use this um, you can also um, let's see oh octaves there's the octave. Okay, octaves are really important. Uh, yeah, you can do some cool things. But you want to have an awareness of where they are. Okay, they're your stepping stones. We've only got five notes. Know where your roots are because when you start playing blues and you're going from, you know, you're only playing three chords, you need to land on the first chord, go to the fourth chord, to the four chord, back to the one chord, acknowledge the five, down to the four, to the one, to the five. You need to be able to hear that. And if you don't know where your octaves are, you know, it's three notes or, or three chords and five notes. It's not rocket science. So it's kind of like in fifth grade when we learn our multiplication tables. You've got to do that. You don't want to be getting into algebra saying, okay, seven times seven. You're, it's not going to happen, <laughs> you know, so you've got to get those basic things just out of the way, okay? You need to get the road map down to your pentatonics, and as you're learning that, and as you learn the names of the notes up and down your fifth and sixth strings, make some sense out of it, you know? Don't just get it up here like, okay, I've got it memorized. That's not helpful, because when you have something memorized, now you got to go get it <laughs> to use it, you know? When it's in your DNA, then that means that memorization has gotten a chance to be used. You know, you didn't just memorize it. If you walk away from it and don't use it again for a while, memorization fades real fast. But if you memorize it and then use it and then stick it to different touchstones, you know, you've got do 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 you got your five notes. If you know your roadmap, that root six and root five, basic and expanded pentatonic, like, like I, you know, which is my roadmap, not that other people don't use that too, but that's really how I see the neck of the guitar. If you know that, then when you learn the five notes that I'm showing you and the 50 lick squared, it's sitting in something you already know. So it reestablishes that information, okay? Then if you start looking at your octaves, oh, now you're really grounded in that roadmap that you know with, oh, those five notes. They're the only five notes. And they're in five places. And, I, and they're all identical. So if any lick that I play one place, play it all places. So when you're practicing, use this 50 licks system as a tool to either, one, learn how to play lead, like Merry Christmas. This is a really good way to take one lick and turn it into five. And then ne the next week, just learn one more lick, you know. Or, you know, when you're, when you're learning things, you know, okay, you'll be memorizing solos or, you know, uh, mimicking someone else's solo until you get your own vocabulary. Just really grab hold of one favorite one. It's where you, you know, you've got that in your back pocket. Then try to grab hold of one more. So use it to learn, but if you've been playing for a while, use it to deepen your understanding of the neck of the guitar. Use it to, um, if you're complicating things, stop it, simplify. Step back to just that one lick, play it off five places, and then let each area of the neck teach you what it has to offer, okay? Then, if you've been playing a long time and you're just bored, 
well, it's a great exercise to pull in. It's like, oh, anything I'm doing up here, oh, that's kind of hard down there. But, oh, wait a minute, I can do this with it. So there's three different levels that you can apply the system and uh, really have some growth, you know, because anybody that's here is in the learning mode. And when working with me, this is one of those things that I found to be really helpful, you know. So during your practice time, utilize the system. Um, it'll really help move you forward. It'll help anchor you in. And it'll make you get real with, with the basics, you know. Again, three chords, five notes. That's all we got. So I look at this 50 licks squared, these, you know, uh, it's a five piece drum kit. And uh, then I start really working with my right hand. So one more thing, when you take just that one note and really anchor yourself in, you're muting everything here. If you're having trouble with that, stop, mute everything. Make sure your right hand is relaxed and feeling something. Then just take one note. Make yourself do something with one note that's interesting. Then you're kind of feeling it then you're free to get up and move about the cabin in that area. Okay, so um, 50 looks squared. There you go.